Hello, I'm Kay McMeekin from Cumnock History Group and I'm going to tell you today about our current project called Ploughing Up Our Past. It's a funded project by the National Heritage Lottery Fund and supported by the Coalfield Communities Landscape Partnership. We're going to research the story of farming in the parish of Old Cumnock and the neighbouring parishes of Ochen Lake, New Cumnock and Ochiltree. We've noticed in our research over the years that many local farms have either gone to ruin like this one at uh, High Glen Muir or have been replaced by housing estates such as Barshare or have been lost to open cast. We want to record all the farms in the four parishes and collect information from the people who knew them. Our research at the moment is limited to online, but one of our main focuses is to interview and record local farmers. We're looking for volunteer interviewers to be trained up by our oral history expert, Dr. Sue Morrison, and we'll hope to conduct these interviews when circumstances allow. Uh, and we've been collecting some material, some, some examples of the things that we've collected. We found an advert for the sale of White Hill uh, uh, Farm and Ochenji Farm in 1923. Somebody still had a copy of this uh, catalogue for sale at Garclough and we've scanned that all in. It's from 1921 and the photo of the chap with the collie dog called Glenn and all the trophies is Shepherd John Murray who won the International Sheepdog Trials in Cardiff in 1971. Uh, one of the first things we're trying to establish is exactly where the farm was situated and how the name was spelt, how it's evolved, how long it's been there. So we start by looking at uh, old maps, this one Roy's from 1755 of New Cumnock shows Farden Riach, Ochen Course, Haw of Ochen Course, uh, Daljig, the Cot Burn, the Mill of Dalricht, uh, and I think the other two that you can just about make out are Brayhead and Waterside, or maybe Water, yeah, Waterside. It's interesting to see how the, the spellings change over the years and that's to do with the pronunciation as well, how they were pronounced it often defines how they, they were written. We're interested in other historical things that might be on the farm like a Covenanter's grave, a, a ruined castle or an, an, old, an older farmhouse, a mill, a smithy, anything like that is also of interest. We've been asking people for their memorabilia, like old photographs, drawings, receipts, prizes, and Crawford Sloan uh, sent us this photo of her grandfather's medal. He was Hugh Wilson of Ochengilsey, and he won the medal in 1873 for his Dunlop cheese. We're interested in the types of farm, the size, Farm field names are, are always interesting. Uh, the photographs here are of Greenside Farm, who had a dairy, and the, the horse and cart went round the houses. We've got Daljig Farmhouse with cattle in front, and we've got Bar Hill hay sweeping. I love the lady at the tractor. Uh, we're interested in the people, the landowner, the tenants, how the tenancy went past to other family members and the change from tenancy to ownership. We're interested in family lines. This, The photograph is of the Howitt children. I love how they're all lined up. 
Um, we have and have had for maybe six years now a, a family tree online called Cumnock Connections Tree. Google it and you should find it no bother. Uh, this is farmer James Craig of Blackwood Farm. Uh, and you can see some of it, the first six of his children, I think there was about 12 in all, and these children all went on to farm other farms and marry farmers and so on. It's very interesting. We're interested in the farm workers, the you know the ploughmen, the dairy maids, the boers, what their job entailed, how they were hired. This photograph is from the Baird Institute collection and it is of Cumnock Square in about 1900. It's a hiring fair. This is where people were signed up to a farm for six months. Uh, that negotiated the wages. That, that's often published in newspapers, the going rate. Uh, it would be a big day out for people as well as quite a serious day so their livelihood depended on getting a good position uh, but there would be a lot of merriment I'm sure as well uh, and the hostelries would be well frequented I'm sure so far we've been collecting the information on a website in the form of a blog it's called Ploughing Up Our Past uh, It's I think the actual URL is farming in the Cumnock area dot blogspot dot com we like this format uh, it's you have a post for each farm and down the right hand side on this slide you can see the names of the farms in alphabetical order and other things that have a post It is a work in progress, however. It's not, this is not the finished article, so we can go back and add more information as we find it, which is very useful. We also have a Facebook group, which has 375 members. This is a great way for people to talk about their memories, share their photographs, ask people who's this person in the photo. I can't remember their name and somebody will know it. It's great fun. If, you have, if you're on Facebook, do sign up for it. It's all free. <laughs> Doesn't... Uh, I, we would like you to get involved. We need more information. We don't know an awful lot about the 20th century onwards. There's lots of s records like censuses and so on for uh, the 19th century and other things previously, but we don't know much unless you tell us about the 20th century and the current situation as well. Uh, my email or the email which comes straight to me is farms at cumnockhistorygroup.org and I'm, as I said, Kay McMeekin, the secretary of the history group and I'm managing the project. Finally, there's a few slides that people have sent us pictures of their families in the farms. This is the Gordon family, very busy at Dornell Farm. Uh, the top left, the children are at Colcreer. I hope I've spe said that right. Feeding the hens. The chap is Mr. McGarvey of Duntaggart. Uh, the ladies are outside High Paul Ways in New Cumnock. Thank you for listening. <laughs>